fear of being cut for this last fight. You know, I'd lost my first two UFC fights. And so this was going to be my third. We were, you know, we were both, we were both, me and my opponent both were kind of at a point where it was like, this could be it. You know, they could, they could cut us. They could take our contract and then, you know, we'd be back to, back to square one, trying to get right back in there. <laughs> You know, I want to go all the way to the top and I really feel like I'm kind of in a place now where I can chase that, chase that ambition. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. It is another week and another episode of the Budo Brothers podcast. You got Kyle and Eric and we have another special guest. We have a badass warrior UFC fighter who just had an amazing win in the octagon. If you haven't checked it out, you need to. But we have Sh Shanna Young. Shanna, welcome. And tell us a little bit about your journey and how you ended up in the UFC. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, my goodness. That's such a broad question. Um, <laughs> so I started my martial arts journey when I was eight years old. Um, my younger brother actually was the one that my parents were taking to sign up for a karate class and i just happened to be going along with them um it's kind of funny i tell people how i, I was such a shy child that i actually sat and watched my brother do karate for a couple of weeks before i actually like got up enough confidence to actually jump in and start taking the classes with him um, but yeah, uh, years and years I did, I started out actually in traditional Shotokan karate with my brother and I did that for a couple of years and then I started getting into competition karate as I got a little bit older. And so through, through, I'm going to say middle school and high school, I traveled all over the place competing in the skill and NBL circuit, um, doing competition karate and, um, I had I had a time where I was all about the forms and then I kind of switched over and got really into sparring and team sparring and um, did all of that and then um, in high school I started wrestling because again same thing my mom kind of she had some my mom was actually a teacher at the high school that I attended and she had some students who were wrestlers and they kind of picked on her and poked at her and like, hey, have your have your daughter join. You should have your daughter do wrestling. And so it turned into her almost forcing me to go like try out wrestling. And of course I loved it. And you know, even at that early age, I was kind of starting to get the idea that, you know, this karate, this wrestling, it could all kind of blend together. There's this like mixed martial arts stuff. I could get into that eventually. Martial arts kind of found you. There's one thing I just wanted to ask quick. As as a as a youth, how did that affect your life? Did you find that it gave you more confidence or because we always are trying to get, inspire people to start martial arts um, from like when you started to high school, it's kind of when you started these things. How did it affect you positively, negatively uh, being a martial artist? Definitely at that age as a child, you know. Um, the confidence was one of the things, and I'm going to say probably the biggest benefit that I got from doing the martial arts at that age was just the discipline. Um, I, I think it helped me all around, like as a student, as you know, it kind of helped me develop like my work ethic as I, as I was growing, you know, at that age, it's such, such an important thing for you to, to you know, really realize, you know, how hard it is to, to work at something. Um, and I think martial arts really gave me that like attitude and taught me those life skills that I needed, you know, growing up. Beautiful. So after wrestling, how did the progression into MMA take place? So I actually, I'm a little bit old school. This was back in the day before there were like real commissions in every state. And so I grew up in Virginia. There was no commission and it was actually okay for me to take a fight when I was 16 years old. So I actually had my first fight at 16. My parents signed a waiver and let me get in the cage. I actually fought a girl who was 23 and it didn't go my way. It wasn't the greatest fight of my life, but you know, it was an excellent experience and it just kind of, it gave me that taste of it. And so I was just so excited as I, as I got older to get in there and do it again. Um, and just having that experience and knowing what it was like, you know, I kind of, I think that helped me be ready for the next time that I got in there. So what is it about that feeling about getting inside of an octagon that has continued you to pursue this as, as a career? 
why because you know for a lot of people they're like why am i getting locked into this thing to go fight another human and, and how is this a good idea like how how come you enjoy that you know i think i think just what you said i think that's always a thought you know sometimes a lot of times even still is you know you're walking in there and they're locking that cage behind you you hear the sound of the door close you're just like that i think that cro that thought crosses your mind like why am I here? <laughs> what what did I what was I thinking that got me into this in the first place? Um, no, but I mean, I don't know. I just I tell people, you know, I've I've grown up around this. This is just kind of in my whole life, and so I don't I don't really know much else besides I just I love the rush of getting in there. You know, initially that that fear, those thoughts are a little bit scary, but then you get in there and you get flowing and you're just doing what you do. You're doing what you love, you know? I mean, I know there's so much preparation that goes into every fight and there's a lot of planning and there's a lot of, you know, focusing on maybe specific areas where your opponent's weak or, you know, hey, this is the game plan. How often have you gone into a fight, had a game plan and had to completely abort the plan? <laughs> um, you know, to a degree, the game plan goes out the door as soon as the first few punches are thrown, you know, you, you can train something, you can, you can really drill. And for the most part, you know, you're going to do the thing, but in the end, there's going to be the things that you drilled not to do, or the things that you drilled to do. And, you know, something crazy is going to happen. And ultimately nothing's, no fight is ever perfect exactly as you would intend it to be. Um, you'll, you'll have pieces and parts that are, you know, exactly what you wanted them to be. You'll have pieces and parts that you train and then, you know, it's just like some other times you can know exactly what's going to happen, exactly what your opponent's going to do. You're game planning for them. You're planning for them specifically. And then they actually do exactly what you expected and it still doesn't go your way. So, you know, every fight is a gamble. Really cool. I want to talk a little bit about mindset. Now, I've been told that fighting in the UFC has high highs and low lows because, like, you're in front of everything and you could feel like you're the king or queen of the world. And then, you know, at other times, you just got beat and you gotta, you will gotta walk out of the cage. How do you mentally handle losses and wins? Because there's two aspects to it, right? You win. You can't get so cocky and confident that you don't have to start training. You lose. You can't beat yourself up too bad where you, you quit forever. What's your mindset that you go to to handle these fluctuations? You know, you mentioned the wins and the losses. For me, all of that is just a part of the process. Um, you know, you do the right things. You win. That's a part of the process. It's what was supposed to happen. You won because you did what you're supposed to do. You did the things that you drilled and the things that you trained to do. Um, Ultimately, though, you can go back and you can break down any fight and anything that, you know, any fight you did something that you weren't supposed to do, whether you won or lost. Um, any fight you did things that you were supposed to do, whether you won or lost. So I just look at it all as part of the process. The goal is always to improve whether, you know, whether you came out with the W in the end or not. The goal in the end is always to improve. And so you're always going back and breaking down those things and looking at where it can get better. And your blend of training right now, is it, do you like mix it up some wrestling, some karate, some striking, or is it like you work on your weakest parts? How, how do you, what's the philosophy behind your, your training right now? Yeah, so everything is very, very just blended and centered toward MMA at this point. Um, it is kind of weird where I come from such a diverse background, you know, I have the traditional Shotokan karate, I have the like flashy freestyle karate stuff. And then, you know, I switched to wrestling for a few years, I actually went wrestling in college. So I've got several different styles of wrestling. And um, so it can be kind of tricky to blend together sometimes. But um, I think that's one actually, my last opponent said something in one of her pre fight interviews, that I always come out and fight a different fight every time. And so that's something that I kind of pride myself in, that I can kind of take pieces and parts from all the different styles and do something different every time I come out. And how much, I mean, you obviously have so many different ingredients uh, to a well-rounded game, and you, I'm assuming you've got a, a, a large group behind you, supporting you and, and teaching us. Maybe talk to us a little bit about your team. I've been blessed with so many great people in my life, you know, from my karate roots up to uh, my last team KMA that I was with for eight plus years. Um, you know, they kind of guided my entire career. I was there for 
from my very first pro fight. Um, always just so much support from them. Everybody is like family. I recently switched teams. I came out to Syndicate in Las Vegas. These guys are same thing, just like family from day one. They took me in like, hey, welcome. We're, we're so glad to have you. There's so many great women on both of these teams that I've had the the benefit of being able to train with. And, uh, you know, that's something that a lot of girls, especially in these sports, don't have that opportunity. A lot of girls are kind of thrown into gyms with all guys for partners. And, you know, it, it's completely different when you go to fight a girl in the cage and you've only been training with you know, men. So, um, just, just so much support and help from everybody on the team. You know, everybody's really good to always like step in and volunteer to be a partner. If you need a body or volunteer to like show up extra for extra rounds or whatever you need. And my teams have always been really great. It's so good to have that support, especially when the going gets tough. I'm actually interested to hear what you feel was the hardest part of your journey this far. I don't know, man. It's just, it's like I said, it's all just kind of been this process. And you know, anytime, I mean, yeah. there's been some rough patches, but every time something comes up, it's just like you step back, you evaluate the situation and you're like, okay, well, this is yeah. part of the process. Where is this leading? Um, mm -hmm. I've had a couple of times where I've had to make major changes in my life um, recently. Like I'm working on moving out to Las Vegas. Um, and that's just, I mean, major change I'm, I'm giving up pretty much everything that i had in life and starting all over from scratch i've done it before um before you know i i was in college i was wrestling and then i started doing mma and i kind of picked up everything moved to new city didn't know anybody and started training in knoxville so um I'm gonna say probably that that's been the biggest challenge is just being able to like pick yourself up and go find the thing that it is that you need to continue to improve and to do the things that you're trying to do it's it's funny because that is such a challenging thing in so many people's lives is having something that you want to do and want to pursue and taking that jump towards doing it even we struggled with that at times too it's like you know you're just like oh man i'm jumping full into this thing and just hoping hoping that it works out <laughs> but but uh it's it's one of those things that we say is like you're all, always going to get the lessons from it you're always going to come out stronger as long as it doesn't kill you that's it's going to make you a better human and just watching your last fight like you have crazy potential like it was awesome watching the the front kicks the style that you have on the kicks and then being able to to take down do the wrestling and the jits what would you say is your favorite art to deploy in the octagon or do you just love blending them like how do you know whether you want to be i've always wondered how do you know whether you're should be standing if you should be on the ground like is do you just read like is it instinctive how do you do it oh i absolutely i love it all um and i think i touched on it a little bit before i kind of enjoy having that element of surprise where there's so many different things that you can do and so many different styles from my past that i can blend together it's kind of cool to have that ability to like choose something new and be like this is who i'm gonna be this fight and then next fight i'm gonna be somebody totally different um and so I think that's a lot of fun. And then the business side of the UFC, like it's, it's a, from what I hear and read, like it's super tough until a point to like survive and make it. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of athletes, there's a lot of fighting for cards. There's a lot of like, you know, you have to have almost like media attention to get fights and it, can you can you touch a little bit on the the media side of the business or sorry the um biz the business side of martial arts so the ufc fights are at this point scheduled for a really long time out so you know that's always a fear if something goes wrong in your camp and you have to you have to you know find a new opponent you have to reschedule and things like that you know so much effort goes into a fight camp that you know, it's, it's, you really just honed in on one opponent for so many months that, that, I mean, it gets exhausting when your camps get so long. Um, there's that. And then, you know, you said 
it's really competitive in the in the UFC and you know I was actually in fear of being cut for this last fight you know I'd lost my first two UFC fights and so this was going to be my third we were you know we were both we were both me and my opponent both were kind of at a point where it was like this could be it you know they could they could cut us they could take our contract and then you know we'd be back to Back to square one, trying to get right back in there. <laughs> well, that's good. And you cut weight for this one, right? You went down a, a weight division? 125 is actually my normal division. I had bumped up a couple. I had bumped up one weight class for my last couple of fights just because I had um, my first UFC fight was actually a, a short notice. And I had just cut to 125 the week before. So that one was so fast. I just bumped up a weight class. And then my last one, actually, I had just had a baby. And so I wasn't sure how Congrats. well the weight cut would go. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, when we, we were talking to Michelle Watterson, we were, we're good friends with her. It's always such an interesting dynamic with that and the, the cage fighting. And she was talking about, like, how, you know, when to introduce them to it and when to show them you know, your daughter in the, or your son in the ring and are you in the ring so that's always such a, a cool um thing because you know you got to show them what you do for work eventually right <laughs> yeah yeah i love it so my oldest he's 11 now but of course i've been fighting for forever he used to come to all of my fights from the time he was like, I think he was maybe three when I started doing like the, when I went like pro was MMA, when I started doing MMA really hardcore. And uh, my parents, my family's super supportive. They've always traveled all my fights and they would bring him. And uh, as he got a little bit older, one of his favorite things to say, and this was always a big joke, he would walk up to strangers and introduce himself. And he would say, hey, I'm Chase. And my mommy is in a cage in Tennessee. And so he had people thinking that I was in jail or <laughs> like just coming from a three year old, you know, people don't know what he's talking about. And they're like, oh, your mom's in prison. Like what's, <laughs> what's going on? And my mom would of course have to explain to people, you know, he doesn't understand she's fighting in a cage in Tennessee. <laughs> awesome. Well, I just wanted to ask a little bit about passion projects. I see you're big into motorbikes. Is that something that I've, I've seen a few posts of that? Is that an area of your life that you, you like? Absolutely. I am obsessed with motorcycles. Um, I always say that when my MMA career is over, I'm going to get into like racing baggers or something, something cool like that. I've got a couple of Harleys and that's of course my favorite pastime. Anytime I'm not training, I try to jump on a bike and hit the mountains. Yeah, well, when when TSN does your your reels and stuff, make sure you get them to do it while you're riding the bike. That would be really oh, yeah. sick. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, what is the future plans? We're we're kind of wrapping things up now. What are you? What are your ambitions in the UFC? What are you looking to accomplish there? You know, I want to go all the way to the top, and I really feel like I'm kind of in a place now where I can chase that chase that ambition. Um, I'm obviously getting a little bit older um but you know you keep seeing where all the champs are a little bit up in age you know i've matured i'm I've, I've had my experience i've been in there and you know i'd like to go i'd like to go all the way i'm looking for that title fight beautiful that's awesome well thank you so much for taking the time and sharing your story with us it's, it's always so fascinating to hear each individual's unique perspective that brought them to where they are today and you've got something special. And uh, where can everybody find you on the, on the socials if they wanted to follow your journey? I am pretty much everywhere as Shanimal Shanna Young. Awesome. Well, we can't wait till your next fight. We'll definitely be cheering you on and uh, definitely in your corner. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And thank you everybody for tuning in and we will catch you next week. See you then.